Amen. Well, good morning. Happy New Year. How's everyone doing? Well, I don't know about you. I, I have missed being here. It was only one week, but it seems like forever. I'm thankful uh, for the, the time of rest that I got off, but I'm excited about what God is going to do this year in your lives and also uh, here at Kairos Church. Um, today, uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're stepping into the new year. We're kind of rounding off uh, our series, Wayfinding, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But I had, I had planned um, to come out and really just wow you uh, with some skills that I don't possess. Uh, I, in my back pocket, I have what is called a shofar. And, or a ram's horn, and uh, my, my plan was to come out and just blow on this and make it sound so amazing and wonderful, but uh, it's really hard to do. Uh, has anyone ever tried to do one of these? Yeah, uh, it's, it's not easy, and, uh, and so what, what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute my mic. I'm going to attempt to do this. If anything, it's a good chuckle, um, and, and we'll go from there. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to tell you right now, that was much better than anything that came out last service. Hey, hey, here's what's going to happen. I have Linwood. Come up here. Linwood's here in the service, and uh, he wasn't here last service, and I just gave it to him in the, in the cafe, and he's like, oh, I can play that, and he did it. So here, here let someone, a professional, uh, do it for you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so they, they did put up on the screen. You guys can do that again, just because I knew I was going to fail so miserably. That was a recording I did earlier. <laughs> that guy's is so much cooler than mine. Let's be honest. Like, I wish I had one of that. Anyway, so you're like, what, why are we doing this? Just for fun. <laughs> Welcome to the new year. Um, no, so... Uh, uh, the, the trumpet sound, the, 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 the blast of the shofar, it, it means a lot in, in, uh, in, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament for the Israelites. It has so much meaning that comes along with it. I want to focus on one thing today, and it's, uh, it's called Yom Teruah, Yom Teruah, uh, the, the day of trumpets or the feast of trumpets. Yom is Hebrew for day. Teruah is a Hebrew word for an awakening noise, shouting or blasting, in particular, the shofar Blast. Now, I was reading some articles on this, and, and one of them, it said this, Yom Teruah is a day on which the shofar is to be blown, and the purpose of blowing the shofar is to evoke reminder. Now, with Yom Teruah, this, is, uh, this day is typically celebrated in October, and here's what's really, really cool, and I, I brought all this together, and I'm really, really excited about what God's going to do. Typically, in, uh, in October, and specifically on the seventh year, which is the year of Jubilee, they blow uh, the shofar on Yom Teruah as a reminder and a remnant that there's this year of Jubilee. Well, here's what's really cool. I'm doing it now, but in October, Kairos will be celebrating its seventh year year as a church, and it will be our year of Jubilee. And when that day comes, I will be an expert at the shofar, and I, I, um, maybe, maybe not, who knows. Uh, my wife didn't like me playing it last night for 30 minutes, so uh, I don't think she wants me to continue playing it. But I thought it was really cool that it all lined up this way, and God led me to this, because uh, the, the shofar is sounded at the Jubilee. And if you know anything about the year of Jubilee, it's, it's this year of being set free, set free from bondage and set free from death. Um, or from debt, sorry, and, and, and people are set free to step into God's calling and purpose for their life, and it's so exciting. I just thought, what a great way to start out this year, to step in, to sound the horn, and, and be reminded of who God is, and, and remember all that he's done, and also step into what God is calling us to do. So with Yom Turah, the blasting of the shofar, that's it. It's to remember and to be reminded, remember all that God has done in my life. I'm, I'm going to look back and look through all the things that God has done, just even in the last year or prior years, or all that God has done through Kairos. And then at the same time, with the, the blast of the shofar, I'm reminded that the work's not done, that I, I keep pressing on um, to do the work that God has called me to do. So we sound the horn, 
as a reminder of all the things we've accomplished, all, all that God did in us and through us last year. We even sound the horn and say, hey, you know what? Here's some things that I didn't do last year, but I'm not going to give up on them. And I'm going to look into this year and I'm going to do those things. And then I'm going to desire to make new changes or set out to do new goals. And so I told you, uh, we're kind of closing out our wayfinding series. I believe this is the third time I've said we were closing it out. We're actually closing it out. Maybe. We'll see what God does next week. Um, but I, I just felt it, it went so well with our series because we were talking about how we look back, right, and remember who God is and what he did, and then we move forward. It's, it's knowing who God is and finding out who we are. And so it fit perfectly what God led me to share today as we look back on 2023 and look forward to 2024. If you follow us on social media, we put a post out and just simply asked, what's your word for 2024. Uh, I, I loved all the responses and hearing people's hearts and what God was leading them to. You can put that image up on the screen. Um, I, I put together a little image and there's like a little, if you can see it, it's kind of got like a horn thing. I couldn't find a horn shape like this, so that was my next best thing. Anyway, these are all the words that we came up. Some of them are repeated to make that, but I, I want to read some of the words that came out from some of you guys that shared. Determination, intentionality, uh, light, purpose, Kindness, stillness, enlightenment, joyfulness, anticipation, perseverance, illuminate, grace, patience, elevation, presence, traction, purpose, and rest. These are fantastic words to go into this new year with. And I, I don't know if you guys do this, have ever done this before. It's, it's a very powerful thing to do, to find a word and to live that word out for, for a year. Um, but and I, I love the focus of bettering oneself and making changes in the new year. But I believe sometimes, if we're being honest, like we set out to make too many changes and we, we set these lofty, broad goals that we have every intention of doing, like we desire and want to do them, but one to two months in, maybe three months, if we're really good, it kind of, it drops off the map. And it's really hard to take this word and live it out because life happens and things get, get hard. And, and, I, and I think it's so important as we go through the seasons of this next year to, to treat it as such as seasons, as moment. Uh, I was brought to Ecclesiastes 3, the wise words of, of Solomon, where he said this uh, in verse 1 of Ecclesiastes 3, there is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search and a time to count as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. There are all these times for all these different things. And if you try to imagine doing all those things at once, it's overwhelming. And I, and I think we, we get excited about a new year, the prospects of a new year. It's, 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 we have just these, these things that we can say, okay, that year's done. This is a new one. It's a refresh. It's a restart. And we get real excited about it. And we get real zealous about it. And we say, this is what I'm going to do. And then about a month and a half later, we get overwhelmed maybe by the fact that we set out to do too much or by the fact that we didn't do what we said we were going to do. And we, we feel like a failure already a month in. We just give up altogether. And so I, I think it's very important for us as we look to set new goals for our, our year that we break it down into smaller moments. Maybe, maybe break it down into monthly goals. Take our, our word for the year and say, how can I each year be, or each month be very specific about what I'm going to do in this year? We're seven days into 2024. How's it going so far? You, you have maybe your word, you have your habits and the changes you want to make. Are you, are you sticking to them? Or you want to just be real honest and like, you know what, it's been tough. It's been really hard, and I'm just trying to get to tomorrow. Uh, I don't know about for you, but uh, the beginning of my year has been a little bit rough. I, I had an amazing, uh, you know, time of rest and relaxation um, through the holidays, just being with family um, and just enjoying time with them. And I came back last Monday, and I didn't even come to work. I, I, I came here to get a coffee. I hadn't been in the coffee shop all week. I, not here, let me just really quickly. I was making coffee for myself at home. Uh, I just wasn't coming here to do it. So I came in um, to just turn the machine on and make myself a, a, a cup. And uh, I did that and it went fine. And I was going to leave. And as I was going to leave, I realized that 
there was like a significant leak coming from my espresso machine. And I was like, that, that's not supposed to do that. And so upon further inspection, it, it wasn't good. There was some buildup and it had caused things. And I was like, I don't really know too much about it, um, but I, I know it was something outside of my realm of fixing, or at least I thought. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll call somebody. And I called somebody, they didn't answer. I went on their website and I scheduled an appointment and they didn't show up. Um, I still haven't heard from that person. And so I, uh, after about three days of our espresso machine being down, we were opening the next day, by the way, I just was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to fix this thing myself. And sure enough, I did that. Okay, but anyway, um, so my espresso machine breaks. And then in the middle of all of that, one morning I wake up and my phone just won't turn on. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm like, all right, maybe the, you know, the charger came loose and whatever, so I plugged it in somewhere else, nothing. I was like, well, maybe it's that charge. You know, you just have to be really optimistic that it's not your phone. I get in here and I plug it in and nothing. And so my phone broke. Like, I didn't break it. I didn't, like, break the screen and it was done. It was the phone's fault this time, okay? Now, back in November, I did break my phone, okay? And then I tried to get another one. And anyway, my phone breaks. And then on top of that, like, my daughter comes into my room one night and says her bird of six years passed away. And I'm like, this, this is going good so far. 2024, woo! You know, and so like you, you get into it and you're like, this is gonna go great. And I, I think, you know, we have these moments throughout the, the year and like we're going strong and we're pushing towards these things, but then one thing after another and you're just like, if this is how it's gonna be, let's just fast forward. Let's just go right to 2025. I'm not even gonna try. And it, 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 it's, it can be overwhelming. And while we're trying to make these changes and do all these things, life still happens. But I was, I was thinking about the two things that I experienced. Uh, for me, my, my, my phone was working fine when I went to sleep. It was, it was on, I, I was using it, I plugged it in, it was charging, um, but it was broken when I woke up. My espresso machine made my, my latte fine, but come to find out, it, it had a problem. And, and really, here, so we're talking about words. And my two words are this. It wasn't just one, I, I'm an overachiever, so I went with two. Okay, if anybody went for three, you're good for you. Okay, I went with two. And so my two words are this, in inspection and intention. And, and in thinking about my, like the, ins, the espresso machine, like it, it was working good, or at least it looked fine on the outside, right? But upon further inspection, there, there was a significant problem. So sometimes in our lives, things may look good from the outside, or like they're operating correctly, but there may be just one small little problem or issue that you need to address because if you don't, it'll, it'll break down. Now, that, that happened with my phone. It, it was working fine. Apparently, it was not. Like, the battery was done, and now it doesn't work in the espresso machine. And I, so I think I, I look at that, and I go, okay, I need to, in, if I want to be intentional about the things that I'm going to do this year, I got to inspect some of the things that I sh maybe wasn't intentional about last year. And, and maybe I got to look a little bit closer to my relationships with my, with my wife and with my kids and with my friends. I got to look at my rhythm at work and with family. I got to look and inspect about my eating habits and my lack of exercise. There's not much to inspect there. I'll be real honest. Um, <laughs> I'd be like, nope, not happening. Uh, my spiritual habits. And so just inspecting all of in these things, my spiritual habits and my mental health. And so God led me to those two words, inspection and intention. And now I, I could say, here's what I'm going to do the rest of the year. I'm going to be intentional and I'm going to inspect everything. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do my very best to, to keep with that, this, this overly broad statement. But at the end of the day, I'll, I'll probably lose sight of it because life happens and uh, I get caught up in other things and I lose that focus. And so as I think about operating and putting these things into smaller sections where I can say, okay, what am I going to be intentional about and what am I going to inspect in this season for this month? And so that's what I did. I broke my two words down into how am I gonna do this each and every month. I just wanna give this to you as an example um, and, and hope that it'll help you as well. So uh, here's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna be intentional. So in January, what I'm focusing on is my eating because in uh, November and December, what I was setting out to do in January and February just went poof. All right, and I enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed all the desserts and all of the ice cream um, and my carb intake and eating intervals just went out the door. So I'm coming into January and I'm gonna be intentional, really laser focused on my eating. And then when I get to February, I'll say, okay, I did good on that. I'm gonna keep that going. And then I'm gonna start being intentional about my, my sermon prep. 
I'm going to inspect the days that I'm doing it and the hours that are being spent. Is it too much? Is it too little? Is it uh, pushing into or cutting into things that I should be focusing on? And then I'm going to keep going. And so I'll, I'll have my intentional eating, my intentional sermon prep and move that in. Intentional family time in March. Get down to April. It's friendships. Down to May. It's prayer time. And then in June, it's study time. And now here's the deal. I can begin to um, kind of incorporate all of these things into my months, but I'm going to be laser focused on whatever month that I have decided to focus on. And then at the end of it, I got to June and I'm like, this is a lot of stuff. If, if, I'm gonna, if I really want to do well in these things, I'm probably going to have to keep them going. Or maybe I get to July and I'm like, you know what? Uh, back in April, I, I didn't do a good job with my friendships. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit being intentional with my friendships. Or maybe I want to go back to my eating because it's been too long and whatever. And so, that, and so then you can repeat it. Or maybe at that time, God can say, here's something that you do need to be intentional with and inspect a little bit more. And I can begin to laser focus in on that. And I think taking these, these goals and breaking them into just monthly categories will really help us uh, kind of stick with them a little bit more. We, we get to the end of 2024 or the beginning of 2025 and look back and say, man, in January, was I, did I do that well? And, and was I still being intentional with my eating come May? And in May, was I focused and intentional on my prayer time? And it allows you to re-examine or inspect the things that you set out to do. And so all of this, what I'm sharing with you, and I, like, you don't have to do it this way. This is just something that I... I, I got from uh, reading a book in this little prayer practice that showed up that led me to this. Um, and, the, and the practice that I've heard repeatedly now, um, pretty much for the last four, four or five months, and specifically in the last week and a half, was the practice called the prayer of eximen or daily eximen. Has anyone ever heard of the prayer of eximen? It's E-X-A-M-E-N. Okay, it, it's, a, it's a really awesome, awesome practice. Now, I wanna tell you where... I was introduced to this, um, which uh, recently, uh, multiple times I've heard it in a devotional that I do, um, but the book that I started reading, and you can put those books up because I think these are great books for everyone to have, so these are just some book recommendations. The book I'm currently reading is called The Intentional Year. It goes along with my word. It's by uh, Glenn and Holly Packham. Glenn is a pastor, um, and in that, he talks about the X-Men. Uh, there was another book that I read and have read multiple times since that time called Gravitas. It's by a guy named Jerome Daly, and it is a phenomenal book. And then the third one is Domestic Monastery. Um, and all, all three of these books had this practice in it, and they were very encouraging to me. On that third one, uh, it's a very short listen. I listen to books or read. Um, and if you're a, a mother, I, I would encourage you to listen to that because it was just, like, as I'm listening to it, I was encouraged for my wife. And I'm like, you need to hear this. Like, it's so great. So anyway, I would encourage you to check those out. But each of these things, I kept seeing this theme of, of eczema. Um, and so here's what the prayer of eczema is. You can put the next slide up for me. The daily eczema is a technique of prayerful reflection on the events of the day in order to detect God's presence and discern his direction for us. The eczema is an ancient practice in the church that can help us see God's hand at work in our whole experience. Now, this practice of the daily eczema um, was uh, created by uh, St. Ig Ignatius, and it was something that um, he, uh, he lived out in his life. Do you, can you go to the next slide for me? Um, and this was how he practiced it. He had five steps. Um, it's become aware of God's presence, review the day with gratitude, pay attention to your emotions, choose one feature of the day and pray from it and look forward to tomorrow. And this was something that he did every day. Now, I love it. This is something that I would in absolutely encourage you to do daily. But in the intentional year, they took this practice and said, what would it look like if you did this for the year? What would it look like if you looked back on your year, if you reflected on your year to see what God has done, what God is doing, and how God is working and moving? And then, of course, from that, I was like, that's awesome. And it was very helpful for me to look back on my year. But I said, then, man, what if we did this every month? Well, we do it daily, and we look at 
things daily that are fresh. And then we look back at the end of a month or at the beginning of a new month. We look back and say, man, what did God do? How is God working? How is God moving? Uh, how was I intentional? And stuff like that in the month. And so that's why it led to me breaking down my words into these monthly sections so that I can go back and examine them uh, a little bit better. And the yearly examen, which is, again, a reflection, this is what it is. It's looking back. So we're saying it's yearly. So we're looking back on 2023 and we're inspecting all the things that took place. And then we're looking forward to 2024 with intention. Now, if you think about 2023, I mean, do you, do you remember what you set out to accomplish at the beginning of the year? Do you remember what your, your word was, if, if you had one? How did it go? How long did it last? What did you accomplish? What, what did you fail to accomplish? And these are the, the kind of things that this, this practice will bring about where you can begin to look back and say, okay, I did this, I did this, that was great. I didn't do so well here. And so what I want to do for the remainder of our time is I, I want to give you uh, what I've compiled from uh, some from the intentional year, and I'm calling it the Rhythms of Eximen. And I just want to share them with you to help encourage you on your goals, on your habits, on your word for this year, and to help you live that out and help you to attain the things that you are looking to do. So the first Rhythm of Eximen is review. And we've kind of talked about that a little bit, but it's, it's a looking back. Uh, there are some questions from the book that I really like that I wanted to share with you. And uh, it's a lot, so you, if you want, you can take a picture of it. Um, but these are great questions to ask, uh, whether it's daily, yearly, or monthly. Uh, what were some of the high points or mountaintops over the past year? What were some of the low moments or valleys? What was an average day like? How did I feel in the morning and evening? What issues or problems, if any, did I struggle with? What Reoccurring problems, tensions, or struggles did I experience? Where did I discover gifts of joy over the past year? Where did I experience sorrow and grief? Where did I give and receive love? You know, I love what I love about this, and I think it's so important for us, because uh, sometimes it's easy to look back and think about all the great moments and all the wonderful things that took place, but I, I love that they, they put some focus on here. Like, what, what was the sorrow and grief? What were the moments of, of trouble and difficulty? Because at the end of the day, though they were difficult, though it was hard, um, though it, you, know, you, just, you struggled going through it, the reality is, is that God was still at work in it. And, and, and you can look back and say, you know what? While I was going through that, it was hard, but now I see what God is doing. Or now I see what God has saved me from or protected me from. Or maybe now I see what God is preparing me for this year. And so it's so important to look back, and even at those moments that are a bit more difficult. Now, through our, our Wayfinding series, we spent a lot of time uh, studying the life of the Apostle Paul. And I, I've shared it with you through the series about how oftentimes he brought up his past. He, he, he often thought about who he was before Christ. And, and he often uh, thought about, you know, just the grace. Like ultimately, as he brought up his old life and he shared his testimony uh, with other people, what he was brought to was a gratitude for God's grace and God's mercy in his life. And ultimately, that led him to rejoicing. So the first rhythm of Examen is going to be review. The second rhythm is that we're called to rejoice. Rejoice. Look back on all the things that God has done for us. You know, as I look back through the year, and I was looking through some of my journals, uh, I was brought to a scripture that I was, I was memorizing in the beginning of the year, and it was Psalm 77, 11, and 12, and I loved it so much. It says, I will remember the Lord's works, yes. I will remember your ancient wonders. I will reflect on all you have done and meditate on your actions. And that's what it is. It's looking back to see what God has done and rejoicing over all of it. And this is what Paul did. Paul rejoiced often. Paul rejoiced in suffering. Paul rejoiced in prison. Paul rejoiced even though he was beaten, even though he was stoned, even though he was imprisoned. He was rejoicing in suffering. But more than that, Paul often rejoiced in God's grace, his grace for him, right? He, he brings up so many times, that he, like the worst of sinners, but yet God chose him. Paul rejoices in the work that God called him to. Could have chose anybody else, but he chose Paul. God, Paul rejoices in, in hearing about what the churches are doing that he has helped plant and, and establish. And often Paul, because he's someone who rejoices so much, he encourages his churches and subsequently us to rejoice. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, what's it say? Rejoice always. 
Paul, again, in Philippians, to the, 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 the church in Philippi, 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. And so it's so important. Like we could, we could have a horrible year or there could have been something that happened that was just so traumatic and so hurtful that we could look back and say, there's nothing to rejoice over. But if you're here and you're breathing and you're living today, there's something to rejoice over because God has you here and God is working in you and through you and he wants to show you something. So we rejoice in the fact of God's grace and mercy for us and that he has us here and he has a purpose for us. So whether we are making strides in our goals or we hit a few stumbling blocks, man, remember, not only to look back and rejoice, but as you move through this year, to continue to rejoice, rejoice in God's good work uh, in us and through us. And I believe as we continue to focus on what God is doing and how he is working, it'll help us stay optimistic and help us keep pressing on to what he's called us to. Because the enemy, the enemy likes to get into our head and, and put our failures and our mistakes and tell us not try and gets us thinking negatively and and so when we choose to go to God and remember his good works and rejoice, it helps us to continue to press on. Even though we failed, even though we messed up, that doesn't mean that's who we are or what the rest of the year is going to be like. We're just going to keep pressing forward because God has us here, so we will rejoice. That's number two. Number three is repent. This one is so important. The rhythm of excitement of repentance. I want to read to you from Acts 3. This is from the Amplified Version. It says, so repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins and return to God, seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, this scripture is so powerful. Repentance sometimes is a hard thing to do, but I love the promise here. When we repent, repentant of our ways, when we confess of our sin and the, the things that we have done, it says that we will be refreshed. Repentance leads to being refreshed. I think it's so important. Like sometimes we look back on the year and we like to kind of just forget the bad things and say, you know what, let's just leave that in the past and move forward. But if you want to move forward in what God has for you this year, you can't do it without repentance of the sin that you committed last year. You got to look at it and, and, and maybe ask the questions, where did I fail? Where did I fall into temptation? Where did I forget or refuse to live out God's calling or purpose for my life? Where did I hold back forgiveness? Where did I hold on to bitterness? Who did I speak hurtful words to? Who did I cause pain and sorrow to? It's a looking back. I know it's hard. You don't want to remember those moments, but we got to look at those moments and say, in that moment, did I truly repent or am I still holding on to it? Because if you're still holding on to the past, you can't move forward into what God has for you for this year. So repentance is so important. And, and, and Paul talks about it all the time as well. But it's all about remembering, confessing your errors, turning from them, and being refreshed by God's grace and God's forgiveness. Because that's what he gives us, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. And he wants us to take those things and move forward, not dwelling on our errors or on our past or on that thing that happened, but moving forward in a new life, in a new hope, and a new purpose. And it's going to come by repentance. The fourth one is request. Sharing your requests with God. This one probably comes a, a, a little bit easier, but I, I have heard many times people say they feel selfish when they pray for things for themselves. They're really good at praying for others and praying over others. But when it comes to the things that they are, are desiring or looking to do, or for their, they have a hard time requesting the things from God. And so, man, this is so important that we bring our request to him, our intentions to him, our desires to him. Again, Paul, in Philippians 4, he says, In everything, through prayer and petition, let your request be made known to God. In everything, whatever it may be, go to him. Listen to me. Your request, do not burden God. He's not tired of hearing from you. He loves, loves to hear from his children. He especially loves to hear from their heart. And as we bring our request to him, he will speak to us through his spirit and through his word and he'll reveal to us what his will is for us or for that situation or whatever it is we are praying for. But we've got to make sure we're requesting these things. So what's that mean? It means pray and pray again and pray again 
and request again and request again and request again. And just when you're thinking, you know what, this isn't going to happen, just keep going. And, and maybe you might, might not get what you requested in the first place, but God will lead you to something even better. And he answers your prayer, but you got to keep requesting of him and asking of him. And it's so important that we do that for this year, for our marriages, for our relationships, for our families, for our work. Share your requests with him. Let your requests be made known to God. The fifth and final one. Rhythm of Eximen is to renew. It's renewal. We go through these things. We go through reviewing and rejoicing and repentance and requesting. And then there's this renewal. It's really easy. I, I think I talked about how sometimes we don't like to look back at the past and the hurtful things. And then there are people that go the opposite way and all they see is their failure. All they see is how they messed up. And the enemy wants us to live there and, and dwell on how we failed. But you don't need to dwell on that. You need to dwell on the fact that God has you here and he can empower you to overcome whatever you dealt with in the past. Dwell on his goodness. And it it happens when we renew our heart and renew our mind with his word, with his spirit, with his people, continually, daily, going to him. In in Romans 12, I'm gonna give you verse two and 11 and 12. It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does that happen? It's through the Holy Spirit. It's through revelation of his word. It's through hearing a revelation or being spoken over and encouraged by another brother or sister in Christ. There's this renewing of your mind so that you can discern what's good and pleasing in the perfect will of God. Verse 11 says, do not lack diligence. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. And all of these things kind of affirming and echoing these rhythms of eximen. No matter what, no matter if we're on a mountaintop or we're in a valley, we are persistent and we are patient and we are diligent and we serve the Lord and we do not lack in spirit. If there are things that you fail to do, so, so what? Set out to accomplish them this year. What's to say that you can't just because you didn't when you thought you were going to doesn't mean you can't do it now. The things that God revealed for you to step into, man, make a commitment today. I say, I am going to do all that I can to make this happen. But it, if we want to renew our mind, if we want to step into these things that we're desiring to see in our life, I mean, it comes from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the only, the only true forces that can bring transformation in our heart and mind. And so we need to seek Him, seek His Word, seek Him in prayer. And it's not just when we go in prayer, it's not just speaking, but it's a prayer of listening hearing what God is saying to us, hear what God says to us through others, see how God is speaking through uh, a sermon or a song or a book. He's speaking. Are you listening? Are you seeking? Are you having your mind be renewed? Because, you know, again, our thoughts often condemn us, but God's grace forgives us and encourages us. It says you can be renewed. You, you can accomplish what you're setting out to do, but don't try to do it alone. Do it with me. Do it with my spirit. I, I hope that these rhythms will help you set out to do whatever you uh, men are, are attempting to do this year, whatever goals you're setting, whatever habits you're wanting to do, whatever changes you're wanting to make, whatever your word may be. I, I pray that this, this rhythm of eczema can help you, whether it be daily, monthly, or, or even yearly. I want to leave you with this. You know, as we set out for a new year, we, again, we review our our last year and the things that we didn't do or things that we did. We look forward to the new year. But ultimately, our goal for every Christ follower should be to be more like Christ, right? That's what we're setting out to do. And it's it's no coincidence that, man, this this ram's horn, really what what it sounds is the return of the coming King, of of Jesus coming back one day. Paul puts it as this, as the day approaches. We don't know when it's going to happen. This this day of of Yom Teruah sometimes is is called the day that no man knows. And it's because we don't know when he'll return. But until the time that he returns, we're going to do everything we can to draw closer to him. So when he shows up, then we'll be taken up with him into heaven. And not just us. Because as we live out our lives for him, other people come to know him. That means more of us get to spend eternity with him. It's no accident the Apostle Paul speaks of the final coming of the Messiah, and it comes by the sound 
of a trumpet. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. It says, in a moment, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be rise incorruptible and we will be changed. Verse 57 says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, be steadfast, be immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work. If anything, I pray that the shofar blast would be a reminder that one day our King is coming back. And when he does, he's taking us with him to heaven for all of eternity. And if anything, find hope and joy and peace in that. Because that's our hope. He is our only hope. Let the shofar blast be a reminder to continue to align our lives with God's will. Let the shofar blast be a wake-up call to not get stagnant or idle in our faith or in our walk with Jesus or in the things that God has called us to do. Let the shofar blast be an encouragement to keep pressing on, to not forget what is to come. As we enter into the new year, whether it be in pursuit of joy or purpose or determination or grace or presence or patience or stillness or intentionality or whatever your word may be, may we do so by being steadfast, immovable, and excelling in the Lord's work with an eager anticipation of his return one day and being more like him while we wait to get there. I'm gonna ask that you guys would bow your heads, close your eyes. I just wanna take a moment to pray over you, over your family, over your desires, over your intentions, over your goals. God, right now we are thankful. We rejoice that we have breath today. We rejoice and we are thankful for it relationships in our lives. Thank you for our spouse. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our church family. God, we thank you for the work that you give us that allows us to provide. God, we rejoice in all that you are and all that you do. God, though we may have struggled and experienced tough times and difficult times, we are standing today rejoicing because you're not done yet. There's still work to do in my life. There's still work to do through my life. God, continue to use us. God, I pray right now over marriages. I, I pray that as, as these couples enter into this new year, they would be intentional about their time together, that they would make time to be in the Word together, they would make time to pray together, that they would make time to go on date nights, that they would just make time for themselves. It's so important. I pray that they would draw closer to you individually. And as they draw closer to you individually, they would come together. God, I pray for our children. It's a new year for them. They're in the middle of a school year. I pray for their heart. I pray for their mind. I pray for protection over them. I pray that you continue to challenge them. I pray that we we rejoice over them. God, I, I pray that we would speak life-giving words into them. In a world that's filled with negativity and hurt and pain, let our homes be a place of peace and joy and encouragement. I pray for our teenagers. I pray for the change and transition that they're going through. I pray for the, their heart and their mind to be protected. God, I pray for every individual here. As we look to this new year, I, we have goals and habits that we want to create, and changes that we want to make, and we have this word. And I pray, fervently pray, that they would see it through. I pray that you would continue to remind them in their heart and in their spirit. Maybe it would be with a shofar blast to remind them what you called them to do, that they would carry it out. God, I pray that they wouldn't just do it for their life, but that they would bring their, their, their family along with them and bring their kids into this, this word or these goals and do it together as a family and grow closer together with you as a family. I pray over our church, over the coming year of Jubilee, of being set free from bondage, of sin and shame and 
regret and pain of past debts we couldn't pay. Your son Jesus freed us from all of that. I am praying that over our church, that we would see more and more people come to know you. We would see more families come to serve and worship you. God, that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. God, thank you today for the reminder and the promise of your word. May we take it with us into this new year. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen.